Increase empathy and we practice that and we grow that as a community. It's, I really appreciate um, thinking about this entry into Jerusalem as a peaceful march in contrast to the violence. I think of Jesus as love. Any others? So I don't know how to reconcile Jesus' message with the Old Testament, which certainly has a lot of good guys and bad guys. There are bad kings and good kings, and the Egyptians were bad, and Pharaoh was bad. So it doesn't seem like it to me that he, people are complex, so they're not all good or bad. And so I'm not understanding how. This message reconciles with what the message is in all of the Old Testament. I'm going to leave that question in our midst as a community. It's helpful. There is a constant refrain uh, in the scriptures where God says, Rely on me and not on war forces and chariots. It's throughout the Hebrew scriptures. There's a refrain over and over again. That we be the one that protects you. The war horses and chariots were the tanks and the guns and the airplanes of the day. And so there is always an invitation. I think there is lots of ways of interpreting those texts that are very violent. But it is helpful to hold that invitation of God throughout. Others. May this conversation play out more, Chris. We all know the conversation can continue over donuts and coffee. I guess I've, I've, I've been thinking a lot about the call for a different way of living and, and framing it specifically about peacemaking. And thinking, of course, about what it was like for the people in this story that we read, but also rephrasing it for what it's like for people living in Jerusalem now and the, the greatest sort of peacemaking need that I experience on a daily basis living in the city has to do with folks who do not have homes and there are dozens of peace related reasons for that lack of education lack of mental health care uh, lack of resources lack of jobs to provide housing the cost of housing I think we're familiar with all of these and, and I, I wonder for churches like ours the congregation with about 75 members in total, sitting on 35 to $40 million of assets. How seriously we take the call for peacemaking um, in addressing the needs that we see around us every day, um, which dovetails into a discussion that we're being invited to have this coming week on Wednesday discussing housing. Amen. Appreciate that. When we lift up as a small community who has all of these assets in the building, then we address the violence of being unhoused, right? And we make peace as we step into that. If you did not see the group faith in action, East Bay is a group that we've been doing some community organizing with. And we are going to listen as a woman from the Richmond Land Trust comes and speaks about their experience. Um, there is a local land trust as well, but how, what are creative ways that people use land and people use resources, I would say, to love our neighbors, care for those around us, to make things. May we 
hold this text, all of its prophetic radicalness, did we not easily push its challenge away? May we hold it and guide us in weeks, months, and years ahead. Amen. Now we have a beautiful, beautiful, uh, oh, I think David will give an invitation to the offering, and we have a beautiful musical offering. On Palm Sunday, Jesus entered Jerusalem to give all he had, including his life, for us. In gratitude, let us give generously to the work in his kingdom. It is now time for our tithes and offerings.
beautiful. Our prayer of dedication. Jesus came as our King to share your blessings with the world. The one who was greatest among us became the least for us in our salvation. Our servant King humbled himself to sustain our weary souls. Receive the gifts we bring before you this day, that the whole world may know the glory and power of your kingdom. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Real quick, there's a number of announcements of our community life this week. We already lifted up on two o'clock uh, Wednesday. Is that a faith in action meeting that will happen via Zoom? Person. The one, uh, I'm going to jump to Easter and then jump back. So we have a few announcements. Um, do you want to do it? Okay. Julia will give us an announcement of need for volunteers on Easter. The props. If anyone would like to fill plastic eggs with candy, or one more bag, or you can just go out and buy them. Thank you, Judy. Um, and I'll bring them Sunday morning early so that we can find them for the Easter egg hunt. So let me know if you're going to do that. We would love to have lots of eggs for all our kids. And then I also have a sign up sheet for refreshments for Easter Sunday. About two people, thank you, Carrie, and thank you, Martha, for already signing up. But if anyone else would like to bring refreshments, I want to make sure we have enough. So be sure to let me know if you're planning to bring something. Uh, finger food, fruit, whatever you want for next Sunday. Thank you. Amen. Appreciate uh, Julie all your work on uh, the PSB community together, making spaces where we can get to know one another, support one another. So there is a lot that happens before next Sunday, and a lot that happens in Jesus' life. There is a long journey. But I invite you, we are not going to have Bible study this week. And you have an extra hour of time so you can come on Friday. So on Friday, we're going to have a station, stations of the cross set up throughout the church campus. We'll probably go through the fellowship hall, we'll go to the reception room, maybe the front lawn, and then you'll end up here in the sanctuary. You can come anytime between four and seven and join uh, another person or two and journey through the stations. We'll basically be reading the scriptures um, and then uh, some doing a different action different reflection on your own station. It is a privilege to be able to avoid the pain and sorrow of this world. I say that as a very privileged person. But it is not a Christian thing to avoid the pain and suffering and sorrow around us. So although it is uh, helpful at times when we are overwhelmed to say, I just can't handle that, I can't look at that, I believe that Walking along these stations, for me at least, have been a helpful invitation to think of others who are struggling or suffering, to think of my own pain and hurt, to think of how that parallels Jesus' life. It will be an invitation of prayer, an invitation of reflection. It may not be joyful at each moment, but it is an invitation to deeper wholeness, deeper connection to each other, deeper connection to God, and an invitation to how we may be the church. I believe you must go through Good Friday to understand Easter Sunday. It is not the same celebration on the other side without the difficulty, the betrayal, the hurts, the brokenness. We know that that continues today, and we know we must hold both of those. And this does not mean that you need to be ready for Easter Sunday. Even if you come and celebrate with us, there are times when Good Friday feels more like the world win than Easter Sunday. We hold the tension of those two together. So please come and be ready to uh, enter into Good Friday in a new way. Let us stand as we sing our concluding hymn together. The Sacred Head Now Wounded, number 221 in your hymn. Please stand.
Man, you can remain standing as we are sent out. Just a helpful uh, reminder, one of the reasons it may be as selfish that I set up some stations of the cross many years ago was because we had little ones and I wondered how they could interact with this story. So this, the way that these stations are set up, someone of any age could go through them, reading, engaging at any level. I've also had um, uh, an 85 year old member of the church I was at before say it was the first time that they had engaged uh, the Good Friday text was by going through these stories and having different activities at each station. It was appropriate for all of us as a community. Please read as God sets us out to be the church of the world. I will race you all for the best of Dick's Donuts, which is uh, in the coffee hour right afterwards. On the back of a donkey, Jesus came to bless us with love in his heart. Jesus came to save us from the power of death. Jesus came to free us. Go with the blessings of God's anointing. Amen. <laughs>